Of course, uh, this is still the ballot Nigeria, and of course, uh, keeping you up to speed with uh, uh, happenings, uh, the off-cycle elections in Imo, uh, Kogi, and Bayelsa State. We have um, some news for you, some updates uh, from Kogi. Uh, INEC has issued a statement uh, suspending election in nine words um, in the state. Um, I, I don't know if, um, Dako, you can do the honors and just uh, let's see what the, the specifics of the announcement given by INEC explaining why they suspended um, nine words in Kogi uh, State. I mean, this news is particularly breaking, and of course, uh, there's an official release from uh, INEC there. Now, uh, the, there's a, a press release with a caption, suspension of their uh, uh, election in some uh, lo locations in Kogi State. But we'll go uh, to that. Let's, of course, uh, link uh, with uh, Idris Abdul Malik right now, who is on standby uh, online, that's uh, via Zoom, to, of course, uh, keep us up to speed as regards happening in this area. Idris, number one, we apologize for keeping you, uh, of course, uh, at this late. Uh, we believe that is for the interest of the nation, but thank you so much for joining in. Thank you. All right. Uh, can you just uh, 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 keep us up to speed as regards what's happening in your area? Uh, well, uh, as of now, election has been concluded and coalition is ongoing uh, at various uh, coalition centers at world level. Uh, structurally, after this particular moment, they will all move into the local government. I'm still inside time, not too far from any headquarters, mm. and also not too far from police headquarters and local just INEC uh, local government headquarters. So what we are keeping up now, maybe in the next one hour I can close for the day, because there are indications that the coalition will go through the night, and then before moving to the INEC headquarters at state level, might likely be early morning tomorrow. So that is the situation we have. But what we have enjoyed so far, is the fact that uh, we have uh, enjoyed some level of peace compared to what we've been uh, witnessing for quite some time, like the last election. Mm. So, but the, 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 the turnover of, uh, of electorates has not been too much encouraging. And in the last two hours, some of the information we are getting part of the uh, state is also not too palatable. Mm. But I think by and large, election has been conducted. It's left for the candidate and the political party to assess themselves and be able to know what other plan B do they have, because election is a contest. And in every contest, they are bound to be a winner. Somebody may be declared rightly or wrongly, like we witnessed in the last election that uh, Barista Natasha was declared wrongly, and she never took off any arms, and she went to court, and today she's a senator. Mm. And that is what we have to do. So we are waiting for the final declaration and see how to take it off between now and Monday. All right, uh, Idris, there's a breaking uh, story right now from Kogi State as regards INEC actually suspending yeah, the Mabongo. elections in nine words. In yeah, nine in words. Okay, there you have it on the screen. Ca can, you, ca yeah. can you please uh, take the, us through what exactly is, is going on? Practices. We also have our observer. My office declared uh, in working with Situation Room, we didn't... Uh, Deploy less than 60 persons, and Ogurimagongo is one of the places that we deploy to and some other areas. The information we are getting from, from the central central district is also not palatable. But let's wait. I, we are professional. We shouldn't be in a rush. And that is why I've always been telling the media to be a bit patient. Even when some of us went on course in South Africa on investigative journalism course at the Wheat University, it's not about breaking news. It's about investigation. It's about coming out at the end of the day and getting your facts. So if you break news too much in the hurry, you might end up breaking fake news. I think so the, you, now, the breaking so news we're referencing at this time, uh, sir, uh, is um, an announcement uh, by the umpire, electoral umpire, INEC. So it's not about impatience. It's in reporting uh, what it's has happened. So I want to ask you... I want to ask yeah. you, sir, I want to ask you really, um, what's your assessment of the performance of INEG uh, in this current um, process that you witnessed compared to every other uh, process that you've seen in Kogi State? And then uh, secondly, how soon do you think uh, collection will commence? Well, 
For me, I have been a Kogi State for at least 18 years, working one way or the other. And I've been working on elections since 1998, 1999. So I am somebody who knows a lot about elections. And I'm number one civil society working with INEC. However, there are parameters of assessment. We want to assess an institution that is human made. For us today, it's about the INEC guidelines. And this has been there for the first one year. INEC announced result, uh, announced timetable uh, on the 11th of November last year. And today is 11, 2023. So if you are going to look at INEC, you have to look at INEC pre elections activities, election day activity, which we are today. So for us, uh, the preparation in itself is, uh, is substantially okay because that is what the electorate says. Never say 90% or 100%. It says substantial compliance. So for us, it's from November 11, which we have been part of it. I also host a radio program for the past three years, and I've posted INEC in the last three years, four times. So I am part of what is happening. For pre election activities, it is substantially compliant. For today activity also, we also find that election, electoral, electoral material came up in an average of uh, uh, up to 70% within the period of uh, uh, 8 and 9 o'clock. And most polling units open at 9 o'clock in various places according to our own observer and what we also have, uh, observe. And materials were also available for the electorate to cast their vote. So I know for now, as far as we are concerned, have been able to do their job to some extent in compliance with the electoral uh, act or the electoral law, whichever terminology you want to use. However, mm. when you are doing this kind of a thing, you don't have to look at the institutions of empire alone. You have the security agents, you have the candidate and political parties, are, and even the media themselves. We need to look at this thing holistically. How have all of us collectively Ah, That's so part of the process. I mean, that... uh, we will get to talking about all other actors um, in the field. But uh, we're, we're talking to you as somebody who is on the ground, your perception of what has happened. Um, other CSO, um, uh, Connected Development, for instance, has commended INEC, just like you've done in some areas. But they have concern about low voter turnout, turnout. and votes buying. What was the it's situation in Kogi? The low, the low voter turnout cannot be blamed on INEC. The candidate themselves and political parties failed woefully in their mobilization strategies and in their voters' education. So if people are not happy with the situation on ground, and they, 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 they find it difficult to come out to vote, today we witness a lot of vote buying. But like you said, the, se the second question, I've not been able to attend to it because you are saying how early. We have people, we have places that are very, the, the distance is far. So we are expecting the fact that within now and probably 12 o'clock tomorrow, INS will be able to commence a coalition at the headquarters. So that's the, our own uh, way of looking at it. I'm not far from local government. I'll pass through there to see. But Lokoja have some distances, and then sometimes we have problems. So let's be a bit patient. By tomorrow, I believe, no matter how late or early, they will commence coalition at the central coalition center, which is INS headquarters. And God willing, we are going to be there. Okay. Mm, no. um, there's a part of the question I asked you uh, that you missed, and that's um, the situation with vote buying. There were allegations that um, we still are vote not done with that. Buying. There are vote buying that is very, very feasible. I saw it. And even when I went to my own ward, which is about 85 kilometers to Lokoja, I have one cool sister that also showed me evidence of vote buying. People mm. have been given six years of plot and 5,000 naira cash. But uh, one thing is the fact uh, that any, any political people, party, you know, uh, I mean, yeah, the two leading political party or the, the three leading political party are, are deeply involved in vote mm. buying today, and that is the truth. So it's not about one party, but it depends on which are the three leading political parties. Sorry. Mm. Okay. So there is serious vote buying. We witnessed it. We saw it, and there are evidence before me that were presented to by somebody who was the same parent with me. Okay. who claim that we have collected six yard and then collected 3,000 naira and some other ingredient to cook soup. <laughs> so evidence of good one is very, very, uh, very, okay. very high. Uh, did, that, did that, do you think that actually swayed the people? Because there is this sensitization that if they come with their gifts, you may collect, but then go and vote your conscience. Do you think that happened? Or people voted as regards what they were given? Of course, definitely they were monitoring them and the security person, you see, we always say these things. At the rural area, 
the way and manner the security agent behave because of their inadequacies is also a problem. If money has been given or otherwise, you see the party agents that are intimidating voters and taking control mm. of, of the process. As security, you have a police unit that have up to 500 uh, or more than 500 uh, registered. I have only two policemen uh, in, in that, or police personnel in that particular. What would they do? So mm. they took up the control. And in that case, vote buying exists without any policemen being able to do much. Even the so-called noise that have been made by EFCC and otherwise, they were not available. I, when I was studying, I saw some officers having crisis with the military in Kaba, within Obajan and Kaba, over the fact that those EFCC staff that claim to be on the road does not have tag, and they were not on election duty, but they were driving. We encountered them. I waited up to 20 minutes after Obajan. And when I got to Kaba again, it was the same thing. I had to move in and uh, identify myself, and then they asked me to drive past. So these are the issues. So where are the EFCCs? Where are the ICPC that will sit there in Abuja and make noise and be telling people we are arresting people? The way manner the deployment of security agents and other uh, paramilitary agencies have not been uh, done properly to be able to help matters. We, we commend the military, we commend the police. However, issues, the issues that are isolated like that, how many of these numerous policemen that were claimed to have been deployed by IG, how many of them were in the local government area? How many of them were the world level areas? They were major, although Kogi State is more or less a rural community. However, we need to know the fact that in all the local government, how many policemen and women were deployed? And to where were they deployed to? And what's supposed to be the instruction given to them? Well, you can see the military stand out clearly on the highway. And the good aspect of it, and even the police department parallel on the highway, so far you are identified with your tag. Eh? And those of us who drive our vehicle with your own sticker, they allow you to go. Nobody's been molested. But we are talking of the event at the polling unit. We have seen places where resorts were not also placed at the polling unit, and they were taking it to collection centers. What is the responsibility of the security men? Okay, so there, there, are, there, there is another... Uh, since we are talking security, I'd like to ask you, there's this instruction by the... Uh, the uh, Inspector General of Police, that no police officer should be seen accompanying uh, candidates to their polling units to cast their ballot. Um, was there a compliance to this, to your knowledge? Because what you've just said about well, the disparity well, I know, I know of the representation. Physically, but I only, I only cover the Western Centralia District. And in the Western Centralia District, you cannot cover everywhere. But uh, since I cover up to 80 to 85 kilometers, and not less than 15 polling units today. I did not witness any candidate on the street that have been, uh, that have been uh, accompanied by a security agent. That is the truth. If I see, I will say so. There, it may exist somewhere else. Uh, that is the truth. The, the candidate for the Jumu local government where I've been deployed to is the candidate of the PDP, and I never saw him anywhere. I went to his polling unit, just like what I did in the last, in the, in the November election, the uh, other elections where I have to phone into radio to as for deployment of security men. At the end of the day, we lost a life in Ayato Rubede, where the candidate of the PDP can for. But this time around, everything went, I also went there today to make sure that because it's a volatile area, we have this see. And from the mapping I sent to you, the Jumu local government is one of the first ones that we predicted. But how far so far? We have not been able to record live like we did in the last time. So I think to me, a lot is being put in place. And I think we need to commit the security agent. And the people of the people, all right. Now, uh, Idris, uh, compared to previous elections in the state and this particular one in terms of the organization and also uh, uh, the process itself, how would you rate it? Would you give it an upward scale or uh, the reverse? Well, you have to look at it, like I told you, from different activities. When you are talking of organization, you are talking of either INEC or security. But even when INEC have put a machinery in place and security men, what about the role of the candidates? What about the role of the political parties and the voters themselves? INEC will not go and disturb its own uh, 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 electoral activity. But the politicians who want to win desperately, who are desperate to win elections, are the ones creating problems. And I can assure you, by tomorrow, you start seeing all sorts of reports from Kogi State, and which has been manipulated or carried out by candidates themselves, by political party supporters. So, but for INEC, I think for us in Kogi State, there is a great improvement from what we had before. 
in the 2019, where we have a, a bad name of God, ta, 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 and people who lost their life in the last four years of governorship election. This one that we had here for today, there's an improvement. Mm. Priority voting is one thing that has come up again. I've asked a few guests on, uh, I mean, their perception on it. I want to ask you, is there an improvement in um, the ability of uh, those living with challenges uh, being able to, uh, with disability, being able to vote uh, during these uh, Kogi elections? And then the elderly, the assistance that was given to them, how would you uh, rate it? Yes, as for the elderly, there are no much uh, respect for them in various police visited. But for the adver for the persons with disability, I never have their statistic, but they are complaining. And the only two categories of uh, disability that have been provided for are persons with albinism and persons who are also visually impaired. But in most places we visited, they don't have those equipment because there is no record to show that in those polling units, we have persons with disability in those. I, I find out today, and they said, no, they don't have those material. But only the training of last week, Thursday, we brought in INEC staff to come and display the material they have for the person with disability. And when I hosted INEC uh, last Monday on my radio for one hour live to engage the citizen, I also asked these uh, questions like you're asking me now. So as far as we are concerned, from places visited in the Western Centralia District, there are no uh, a person with disability that wanted to vote that have been denied. And so that is one thing that is very key. But in other part, which I was not there, I think if those who are working on persons with disability will be in the best position to raise those particular issues. I don't say what I don't see. And there is no sentiment <laughs> comment. Fair, fair enough. I, I do uh, like your straightforward approach to the issues, speaking on the things uh, that you've uh, observed. We do appreciate that uh, very um, very warmly. I want you to speak, though, on the issue of information, misinformation, fake news. Uh, before now, civil society groups were saying they are concerned about how political parties were using influencers and, you know, trying to get people to believe information that might be untrue. Um, do you think there were instances of this in Kogi, and how did that impact on the process? Of course, definitely we have it. There is one you did not add. Eh? The other one that you did not add are the utterances, eh? unguided utterances. Uh, unguided utterances okay. by politicians and spokespersons of candidates. So that we did not add. We witnessed it. And even CDD came here. And even we, with other uh, NGOs, we did that. And we have several, not less than five to six programs on fake news. Uh, on guided utterances. And I even met with the commissioners of police, and I raised that particular issue with him. When I also met with civil defense commander in the state, or his representative thereabout, I raised the issue. And with INEC, because I have a very good working relationship, and even personal relationship with the INEC here. But you see, you cannot to do away with, with the era of social media. People just sit down based on interest and value and post things. But what we do here generally is to provide the real information. When I next issue a statement, just like what you are saying this evening, we have picked it up and we have shared it in different platforms. I have platforms that have up to 30 journalists and then other civil society with the work that we do. We have one for youth and other one, and because our job is mainly looking at anti corruption in election, which will be supported by MacArthur in the last five years. So definitely we use those platforms today. So fake news is normal to some people, but to us it's an abnormal one. But how do you conquer fake news? It will provide the, the important news. It's not like somebody that is the Supreme Court said. It is somebody who issues a certificate or document that can know the one that is fake and the one that is wrong. I've had a call in the last election where I was called and said, one boss is wacky. And I, need, I said, my office is so close. And if you do that, I will be able to know. So definitely, there is no uh, 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 way we can stop fake news. But it's left for you now to provide the right news to the public if you have a uh, communication skills. Talking of fake news, um, there is this report earlier today. Uh, I don't know if I saw exactly on the punch or the vanguard. I'm not sure now. Um, uh, alleging that the EFCC uh, was in Kogi State and in one of the candidates' polling uh, units that they actually um, uh, were part of uh, twatting votes buying in some instances. Um, did you hear 
or see or confirm the presence of EFCC during this process? And did they in any way um, help to stop some of these um, election uh, well, criminalities that we see, saw? See, my dear sister, I was in Edo in the last elections. And uh, there are places that we went. I think the way I manage the EFCC is handling uh, their activities on election. They need to improve on it. How many EFCC personnel were deployed? Where were they deployed to? That is one fundamental question we need to ask the FCC themselves. And where you want to catch, like me, my office, by part of the work I do and the training, I deploy uh, under cover of DABA to monitor violence and the activities of security agents. You are coming in, you have your uniform, and we are talking of vote bank. In many ways, I saw it several places, but the question I'm asking is, in, in those places I went, from Lokoja to, to Kaba, from Kaba to Ayegule, but they're in the Jumuloko government. Where did I witness EFCC present? Where were they deployed to? So when you are talking of EFCC working, is the point is the fact that maybe they have a designated place they want to go and stay based on their own information. But I think their presence is low compared to the noise or pronouncement that they make. If you arrest 14 persons, how many of these high profile people that are sent that are buying votes will you be arrested? And the way I manage the Nigerian Bible, just like I was telling you now, that in a particular world today, where Ankara of five, six years were given, and 3,000 and 5,000 were, were, were given now, where is the EFCC in those places today? So this is the question that we are asking. So as far as I'm concerned, I have not confirmed those things you are saying. But I challenge the FCC, what is the number of persons that were deployed to Kogi State? And where were they deployed to? We saw the police, we saw the military on the highway, and we can testify that they did their job diligently, and we are proud of the way. But it, it should, should the EFCC the be participating in the electoral process? I need to understand that clarity. To your knowledge, I should I they be? be? I work on anti-corruption, right from the bad state, and I, we don't need the FCC because their president there has, has not added any value. As far as we are concerned, what we need to do is to educate the citizen, is to advocate on the implication of vote selling and vote buying. And that would be okay. All those people, they claim they have arrested. How many persons have been prosecuted for, for buying or selling vote? Mm. That is the uh, issue. We don't need to see on election day. All right. people are, a lot of people who are, are, are out on election day were out just for the purpose of collecting allowances and not to make an impact or to add value to election. All right. Now, one of the governorship candidates in person of uh, Dino Melaye actually said in a press conference that he voted. However, uh, it wasn't captured, uh, I mean, to, to the best of, of, of our knowledge, by, by journalists. And right now, it appears like there is a contrary uh, report that he did, he did not, not cast, uh, his, cast vote. his vote. Are you, do I don't you know, know if you, uh, Are you privy to this information? I have not interacted with him because no matter how close we are at personal level, he's a politician. I am not one. I am not supporting anybody and I'm not against anybody. But I think the fact is the fact that media have this attitude on election day is about where their interests and value goes. We saw a lot of media present in the centre where the governor is seated. And then today, when we move to the other central district, I don't think we see much of the journalists in those places. This is the one fundamental issue. So and then you see it's about the fact that when I also ask questions about the way Amana Dino is being reported about one or two months ago, I was told that he has not uh, mobilized them. I don't know what the word mobilization is. So I think his relationship with the media is about his personal and, and the strategy. Who are those uh, media team that are working with him? A lot of people just believe in social media. You post anything. You don't have good relationship with the media. You don't just wait uh, until the event is coming up like today and you are jumping and want media to leave their job. In the last one month, in the last two months, what has been your relationship with the media? In Kogi State, that is one fundamental issue. Even the ruling party itself have betrayed the media in the last eight years. Yeah. No single media houses have been given by coup. What is the allowance that the people's government have been giving? We have raised this issue. Go to NTA, go to Radio Kogi. For one year, Radio Kogi was not functioning. Look at the FRC and other media outfits here. This is the worst government that have had no good relationship with the media and could say. But then this is election time. They may have their own way of getting their information because why? They have their media outfit. They also have people who communicate with them. So as for what you know have said, I have not clarified and I have no business with that. 
All right, I, 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 did, I did have the privilege to work with NTA Lokoja at some point, and I do understand your concern about how the media is treated, um, even in Kogi State. I'd it's like you to speak to on... I, I'd yes, like you... I have the tomorrow. Uh, sorry? I was on NTA one hour last week, Saturday, or uh, Sunday, discussing youth, uh, inspiring youth. And I'll be on NTA tomorrow, too. So All right. I'm concerned. I have a peer up okay, so, times. Okay, where I want to go with my question actually is um, you seem to have, a, I might be wrong, correct me if I'm wrong, you seem to have a grouse with how journalists oh, are, are conducting mm -hmm. themselves during this Kogi process State. Um, in Kogi State. So I want you to make an assessment no, it's not of about, it's the not coverage. About process, yeah. um, can you just let me land, uh, Idris, please? Um, what is, I want to go and do other things. I cannot be I cannot be arrested here too. Okay, so could you just give us your assessment and then we'll let you go. Yeah? We'll let you go after now. Just give us your assessment of how journalists have covered the process. Well, as far as I'm concerned, we've just we are not don't you just did today. Are you talking of pre-elections? Or today elections. I'm talking so about the elections have... today. The elections, the coverage of the election today. You were talking about them concentrating in certain areas. So the social media that we are seeing is about when after some hour we have seen, we have seen few journalists that have sent their own report on social media. We have listened to radio and televisions too, and we have listened to them. But I think it's fair reportage, but it's about the concentration of, of the media in the mm. particular I was in the UJ yesterday. Uh, before we went out today, and I interacted with some of our, our friends there, and that is the way. So I, I think assessment of journalists reporting on the lesson cannot be done today because the process is still ongoing. All right, uh, uh, Idris, I, I think we should let you go now. You seem to have a lot yeah, going on. Thank so we thank you, you very much for giving us your time. Yes. We do appreciate you speaking with us. Thank you, Idris. Okay, thank you. Good night. Good night. All right, that was uh, Idris Abdul Malik, uh, one of the observers there in Kogi State. He spoke quite extensively and quite um, insightfully Insightful about too. events yes. um, in Kogi State uh, today. Uh, we have Francis in the studio. Francis, we thank you very much for your patience. I mean, you've followed our conversation with Idris uh, so far. Uh, what's your thinking of what played out in Kogi from some of the things he has said? Um, well, you know, Everybody have their own opinion on issues. Um, I don't think it is right for the media to report based on the largesse that comes to them. From what he's saying is, is, is more, is emphasizing on the fact that uh, the, the media has been abandoned all this while. So why do they expect um, uh, fair or good reportage? No. I think the media has a duty to do. The duty is to... I, I don't th quite think that was... I'm not trying to speak in defense for him, but no, I, the, the, I don't I think... I heard him clearly. Okay. The media is employed to provide information, educate the Nigerian people, and disseminate the information. So if the media is waiting... Because like he said, he was very clear. He said they've not given any car, any bus. It's not necessary. The, the media organizations have their own structure... They have a way of getting their money through advert and all of that. So they should employ that into providing information to the Nigerian people and to the states where they are allocated. So um, I believe that, yes, the media, they're trying their best, but let us not attach the media to political parties or to the government of the day. If you I do think, that, I, I, if you... I, my understanding of what he was saying was based off the question on Dino Milaye. He is probably just highlighting that is what I think he, where he was going, uh, but not to uh, as, cast as fashion at uh, journalists or government for uh, not um, for neglect. Yeah, for neglect of yeah. the media, basically, yeah. not in terms of doing their job. But again, it's uh, you, I mean, you can interpret it um, how you see. We both heard the same man. <laughs> but, 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 uh, there are other things yeah. he did mention. Uh, he talked about um, um, the way the security um, officials were acting in some places, just like what Chinwe uh, said in Imo State. You see high concentration of security officials in, in the cities, in but cities. in the hinterlands, yeah. you don't have 
that much. What, what's your thinking on that? No, but it simply shows um, the fact that there is no coordination um, in uh, distributing the security personnel. Probably you just give them signal to go to the capital and stay there. Um, whoever is in charge in, a, in, a, in any of these three states should have, you know, realized that, oh, we have how many um, senatorial zones, how many um, wards. They should be able to use uh, common sense to know that. But unfortunately, it is what it is. The, it boils down to the fact that nobody is held accountable, nobody gets punished, until we begin to make laws that punish people for not doing the right thing. The wrong thing will keep, you know, holding sway. Now, uh, I mean, talking about uh, the elections in uh, Kogi State, and this, of course, a revelation by uh, INEC uh, suspending uh, that uh, nine uh, words, that elect posed in nine words. I wish it could come, that the INEC statement could come on screen right now uh, so that we can all see it and, and of course, uh, read part of it. Nine words. We know that uh, one of the candidates that's uh, uh, running, Dino Melae, actually did... Uh, express reservations concerning the conduct of Pose in, those, uh, uh, in some of those words. Now, what's your reaction to uh, the official statement uh, released by INEC, suspending the Pose in nine words as a result of uh, uh, some reservations uh, in terms of irregularities? Well, yeah, it's, it's a welcome development, but then you just don't suspend. Um, who are the perpetrators? We know the, the bone of contention is the fact that they are there's claim that some resort sheets were already um, filled out and all of that. And so if you suspend the elections or the results from those words, those who were responsible, what happens to them? Will it just be something that will be thrown under the carpet? No. We, we, while you're suspecting, suspending the, the results from those words, you must also fish out those who have perpetrated those crimes. And when you punish one person, it, it sends a strong message that others cannot do it. But unfortunately, nobody will get punished, nobody will get arrested, mm. and the whole thing will just, you know, fizzle out. And the INEC will come up tomorrow and give you 1,001 reasons, probably why they want to retain the result or why, you know, they cancelled it out, outrightly. Suspension, yes. Why are you suspending it? You're suspending it because you're doing an investigation. Who are the perpetrators of those crimes? Have they been arrested? These are the things INEC should tell us. Nigerians have a right to know um, what the government officials are doing. They have a right to do that, to know. So tell people, put the whole thing in front of the people so that the people will know that there is no hidden agenda. Mm. But if you're telling me you're just suspending the result and nobody has been arrested, then, you know, there is more to it. All right. I, I want to, aside of um, result sheets at the polling units and investigation of that, uh, we also had... Um, um, uh, Idris talk about uh, vote buying. He said he witnessed this himself um, in Kogi. What's, what, what's your concern about the continuity of this trend? He said all parties were culpable in the practice. Even today, even after the awareness, people are still falling uh, for that um, act. The truth right now is that Nigerians are hungry. Mm. People are looking for how to get no matter how much it is, to survive on a daily basis. And as long as there is poverty, which uh, unfortunately has become part of the you know, Nigerian system, okay. as long as you have poverty facing the Nigerian people, mm. vote buying will never go away. All right. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Francis Chilaka, of course, a political analyst and social commentator. Uh, once again, thank you for your time. Of course, we would like to say thank you to our previous guests. That uh, Ihejirika Emeka, spokesman, Senator Atan Achono campaign organization in Imo State. We also had Iken Naonoha, special advisor on media, PDP governorship candidate, uh, Imo State. All of them uh, spoke virtually. Uh, we also had Idris Abdul Malik. He also spoke to us live from Kogi State. Uh, this where we'll pause for now. Uh, exactly. Coverage of the elections continue. Like I said, when we came on, we will be with you until the results are uh, announced. My colleagues will be coming on after now. More programming here at New Central. Do stay with us.